Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Trevor. And I mean, first things first, congratulations on your Oscar nomination. Thank you. Your your first documentary gets an Oscar <laughs> nomination. That's that's a that's a pretty high bar for you right now. It's pretty just, wild. I'm done. I'm done, finished yeah? after this. You should no <laughs> quit, quit while you're ahead and just be done. Yeah. Um, you'll be one for one and two for zero. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the um, the film is truly beautiful, and it's it's difficult to capture in that clip. I mean, if someone's watching that right now, they'll be like, "Do I need to be high?" But <laughs> but 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 the film is a story that you have put together. It took five years... Yeah. ...to film this documentary. And it was a story that really is just about being black mm -hmm. in the South. Mm -hmm. How do you even begin to just make a documentary about life? Yeah, I think that's... That's the biggest challenge. I think I realized that you just display it. You don't sensationalize it. You don't dramatize it. You... You know, use the documentary genre because it's this space where, you know, people are sort of predisposed to truth, right. which is a great, great entryway into an idea. And so you film black folks, you use the black banal, you use the quotidian, and you, um, yeah, and, you know, you look to, I think, the logic of music, which is kind of counterintuitive and, and is repetitious and has contradictions in it to provide, like, a space of experience so someone can actually experience what it's like to see and be there, perhaps. Right, because a, a lot of the time, when somebody says, oh, this is going to be a documentary about black people living in the South, you immediately expect conflict. Yeah. You expect it's going to be tension, there's going to be racism on the surface, it's just going to be like this violent portrayal of black life. But this is truly a story that takes place and it takes you through an undulating journey. It, it, it's calm, it's happy, it's sad. There, there are just moments of nothing in the film. Was that important to you to capture black life in the South in its entirety? It was. It was important to, to centralize the black experience and to centralize the black gaze. It's something that Toni Morrison talks a lot about um, with her novels. There's a, a fundamental, you know, use of the camera and black folks where you're sort of pointing to black people as the other. Right. But what happens when you reorient the camera and you centralize our view and you're the other? And you show blackness as a default, not something to be a spectacle or something to be, wow. um, you know tied into a narrative that is important and expresses struggle, but simultaneously sort of forecloses a greater understanding of what it is to be a human being and to be a person of color. When, when you made this film, what, what makes it really interesting is that you moved to Hale County, right? And so you were there and you, you, you lived there for a number of years before you decided to make this documentary. Normally, documentaries are made by people who go to a place to cover a story. Yeah. In many ways, you were telling the story of your adopted community. Yeah. Did that change how you made the film? No, I think it just improved the ability for the film to be an authentic display or rendition of my experience, but then simultaneously the community's experience right. and the negotiation be between that and not some sort of feigned objectivity um, or some feigned, um, you know, exploration into ideas that are fundamentally a sort of fantasy... relate. You have, like, a fantasy relationship to. Right. And... Yeah, I think... I think that's the most beautiful part, is that it was my life with their life that allows you to participate in both of those. And so there's this genuine sort of collectivity in the, in the piece. You, you, you followed two subjects um, whom I believe you met at a basketball camp, right? And... Uh, kind of. Kind of, kind of in that, in that world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and, um, you, you know... What's interesting is it, because it's a journey that takes place over five years. This is the way I felt about it when I was when I was watching the film. It feels like a photo album that mm -hmm. has come to life. You know when you flip through someone's photo album and you you see oh this is when you were a baby and this is when this happened. This, that's that's really what the film feels like. It doesn't feel like a linear storytelling. We're jumping through time and space. The pictures are moving. It's it's really a photographer's portrayal of a film, in my opinion. Yeah. But what's interesting is there are moments in the film where you are you. Are, in the grittiest piece of a person's life. I mean, mm -hmm. there's one point where you are at the funeral of a toddler. Mm -hmm. How do you capture those moments without feeling like you're overstepping boundaries? Well, you know, the moments of the funeral and, and you know, how they're displayed in the films are the only fo footage I have of it because I wasn't interested in filming the footage. Right. You know, I, I was there as a support, um, you know, person for this really tragic thing that happened. And so, you know, the shots are really distant and... 
you know, it happens in the film, and then you sort of move on because the film isn't about the struggle. It's not about the trauma of the situation. It's something that happened, but it's not something that the film is necessarily about. Right. And I think, you know, in terms of the photographic approach, you know, the South is kind of the, the conceptual home for the black image and for black men and for black women and for black people. And so taking a photographic approach allows you to participate in, you know, the, the documentary genre with a sort of enhanced complexity of the moment. Right. You know, no normally films are sort of building off m moments and scenes in order to prove some thesis or prove some narrative. But what happens when you make every frame and every moment the most important moment that's packed with ideas and packed with the ambiguity necessary to really deal with the contradiction of being blackness? Um, yeah, I think it's an interesting thing to just compound meaning as much as possible and sort of see what kind of experience um, emerges. When people watch this film, they're going to have many different takeaways. Some people will say it's beautiful. Some people will say it's, it, it's enlightening, it's calming, it's, it's, a, it's a different experience. As the filmmaker, what do you hope they would take away that maybe you haven't seen people taking away? You know, I genuinely hope that people have an actual experience. I think, well, I mean, I believe that experience is before words. It's like before knowledge. You sort of apply the narrative after, you apply meaning after. And so, you know, the film is rigorously made and with that in mind, if someone can make it through the film, have an experience of what it's like to look through my eyes through their lives, then they'll have an experience of the centrality of our gaze. And hopefully, um, that provides some new input or some new understanding of, um, of me and them and the world. Thank you so much for being on the yeah. show. Yeah. Truly, truly amazing film. Hale County this morning, this evening. It's currently in select theaters. You can also stream the film on pbs.com or buy it on iTunes. Ramel Ross, everybody.